Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Diamondback team rider, Eric Porter, and today, new bike day. So this is the brand new Release 29.2. Let's rip this box open and get started. So there's three different ways you can get your new bike delivered from Diamondback. You can have it show up to your local shop and they'll assemble it for you, or you can have Beeline build it up and drop it off at your house, or you build it up yourself if you know what you're doing. These bikes come pretty well assembled right off the bat. And so it's not gonna to be too hard of a build to put this together. And I'll show you how we get it together and what parts are on it. Look at that. All right, let's get the box out of here. Don't forget your box of parts. This has your pedals, all kinds of stuff like that in there. First thing I'm gonna do is get some cutters, cut all these zip ties off to pull everything apart. And then I can put the seat post in and put it up in the stand and that'll make it a lot easier to work. You can also build it up on the floor if you don't have a work stand. I like to use cutters like this when I cut off the zip ties, because if you use a mat knife or something like that, you run the risk of slicing something on your bike, like a tire, things you don't want. Got a wheel off, got lots of protectors to keep your rotor straight. So you notice this dropper post has a cable running through the frame, and that's how we operate the dropper post. So when we put this in, First thing I'm gonna do is get a little bit of grease on here. And then it's really important when you put this in, you don't just shove it down. What you do is you gotta pull the cable through from the bottom. You get that right in there like that. Then we can snug this up with a four millimeter Allen wrench. And we'll work on the seat post operation itself later. So we'll throw this up in the stand now and then get to work on the rest of it. I'm gonna go ahead and take all of the protective stuff off of this bike now so we can see what we're working with and see what the next step is. It's even got instructions here for which way your fork needs to face. Don't wanna put that thing on backwards, do we? All the foam bits go in there and I like to throw all the cardboard bits in the box that it came in and that way I can recycle all that. They do a pretty good job of protecting these bikes so they don't get scratched up or messed up when they're getting shipped across the country. All right, look at this thing. I love this color. This is one of my favorite color bikes we've made in a long time and actually kind of matches the tool stand I'm working with right here. But yeah, I just love this color of blue. First thing I like to do before even getting on the build is peel the rest of these stickers off here. A couple more stickers here on the crank arm and these tell you which way to rotate as you're putting your pedals on. So that's really important. The way that I remember is pedal backwards as you're putting them on because one side is opposite threaded and these stickers just help you remember which way to rotate. But basically it's pedal backwards to put them on, pedal forwards to take them off. That is once you get the threads in and you have the wrench on the pedal. And then there's a couple other zip ties that you wanna make sure you hit. There's the one right here on the cassette that holds the chain onto your little ring. And there's one on top and bottom there to keep the chain in place. Okay, let's go ahead and put the bars on. So the reason I had that sticker on the fork reminding you which way the fork faces is because the stem comes on backwards. So first thing we're gonna do is turn the stem facing forwards. Easy way to remember is the brake arch that goes over right here. Uh, you want that on the front. So just rotate that around. We'll snug that up so we have decent tension on the star nut up here. And then we will take the faceplate bolts off. On this bike, these are all a four millimeter Allen wrench. So when you put your bars on, you're gonna pick them up and do a twist like that. And you're gonna make sure that your front brake cable is on the outside. And then these two cables are lined up like this on top of each other. So that's your brake line and your shifter. We'll put that in place, put the face plate back on, snug it up, and then we can adjust it and get it set up for our body and how we want it to feel once we get the bike on the ground. When you're snugging up these face plate bolts here on the stem, we're gonna wanna make sure that it's, uh, we have an even gap on the top and the bottom. So the face plate isn't all the way against the stem on the top or the bottom, but it's got a nice even gap at the top and the bottom. You can feel that with your fingers as you're snugging this up. And we've got these guides built in right here as well so that you can line this up, get it all centered, 
And as a general rule of thumb, you just want the rise kind of in parallel with your fork. Um, and basically these little marks right here in the middle will help you line that up. And then we can straighten out our stem, lining up our bars parallel with the top of the fork as well. That's a good way that I can, I like to do it while I'm looking at the bike from the top down. And after you get the bike down, if the stem's a little bit crooked, you can straighten it out and make sure that your stem is straight on the bike. You want everything nice and snug, but not too tight. Um, if you have a torque wrench, all the settings are included also, but um, the main thing is you don't want to over tighten things. So we have this extra cable down here that we push through from our seat post. We can pull that through now, and then everything's already zip tied in place. So we just have to run this around up to here, and then we can put our lever on the bar. This is a three millimeter wrench. Unscrew that, put that right here. And you can set this up however it feels good for you so that when your hand is on the grip, your thumb can reach this lever to operate your dropper post. So I put my arm right here and my fingers on the brake lever right there. And then the seat post operation is right there. So that works out well for my hand, but you can move these around to make it fit your hands as well. Let's see what's inside the goodie box here. We got our user manual in French. I don't know if you speak French. Or the other side, owner's manual. There we go. So this has all kinds of great information in there. Um, it's also a great place to write down your serial number, model name, and everything so you have all the information in case you need it. We got a fender in case you're riding somewhere that's loamy or muddy and throwing up dirt. So we can attach that to the fork right there. Information on your dropper post. Got our pedals right here. I really like that Diamondback includes real metal pedals with real replaceable pins on this bike. A lot of times we get plastic pedals to save money, but Diamondback does not skimp on this. These are awesome pedals. If you're not gonna be riding on the roads, you can pop these off like that. Pop right off. These pedals are labeled right and left. So you put these on the right side of the bike and the left side of the bike. And again, the, this one screws in regular, this one screws in backwards, reverse threaded. But just think about it, pedaling backwards. So this bike comes with valve stems actually as well. So if you wanna set your bike up tubeless, all you have to do is go to your local bike shop or order some sealant and you take your tires off, put the valve stems in, and then you just put your sealant in the tire and blow it up and you'll have tubeless tires then. So everything's ready to go right out of the box. You just have to put these in yourself. So. You can watch other videos on how to do that. I'm not gonna go into that today, but it's really cool that everything is included so that you can do that with this bike right off the bat. Got a shock pump so we can adjust our suspension to set our sag and get it set up for ourselves. And then Allen wrenches as well. If you don't have a full tool kit like I do here, this has everything you need to put together the bike. I'm gonna put this over here for now and we're gonna get this bike finished up. When you put your pedals on, put a little bit of grease on those threads. You don't want these getting stuck on your cranks if you ever need to take them off for any reason. This will take a six millimeter Allen wrench in the back of the pedal. So you pull these around, put the Allen wrench through, and like I said, pretend like you're pedaling backwards. That'll help you remember the rotation or just pay attention to the stickers that are on the cranks. And that goes on super quick. this one through, screw it in forward. And again, you don't have to go too hard on this, just snug it up nice and tight so it doesn't come loose while you're pedaling, but it's also not gonna need Macho Man Randy Savage to take the pedals back off whenever you need to take them off. And who had to come in and make that critical save? The Macho Man Randy Savage! To put on the front wheel, we're gonna take this little red piece out of the brake. This is something that keeps the brake pads where they're supposed to be. You can save this, and if you ever take your front wheel off to put it in your car or truck or something like that, you can put this in the place where the rotor was, and it keeps your pistons from getting pushed in. So if you don't have a rotor in where your brake is and you pull your lever, it's gonna push the pistons together and you're not gonna be able to get your front wheel in. And you'll have to use a, a knife or a screwdriver or something to spread the brake pads back apart to put your wheel in. So take this out, save it for later. 
This front axle is really easy to use. It's just like a regular quick release and it unscrews. So open up the quick release, unscrew it. So you can slide this up right here. Just make sure the rotor goes in between your brake pads. There's channels in the bottom of the fork right there where the hub goes into. And then just slide this axle right back into place all the way through. Screw it in just before it gets snug. And you'll feel it as you start to tighten the quick release that it'll get snug as you go up. And then right there, I like to have it right in front of the fork and you wanna push it all the way in until it stops. So that'll be nice and snug as far as you can push it towards the rotor. There we go, perfect. Okay, before I take the bike down, I wanna run through the gears, just double check, make sure it's shifting how it's supposed to. It's working pretty good. You can adjust it more as you're riding. You'll get a little bit of cable stretch on the first ride and there's a barrel adjuster right here on the shifter. And if you unscrew that just a little bit, it'll snug it up just enough. And um, if you need to, your local bike shop will help you. Or you could watch a video on how to adjust your derailleur as well. But it should come pretty close. I'm gonna take the bike off the stand now and we're gonna finish getting this thing set up. We're really close to riding, I'm excited. The first thing I'm gonna get set up now that the bike's on the ground is the cockpit. So I'm gonna make sure the bars are at the angle that I want them at. And so it feels good to my hands. That looks good to me. Things are centered here. And so I can just go ahead and snug this up. So nothing moves while I'm riding. Dropper post works. I'm gonna lower the seat a little bit more so that I can stand over the bike and set the brake levers where I want them. Okay, now I'm gonna step over the bike and adjust my brake levers. So loosen that up just a little bit. Loosen the dropper post just a little bit as well so that this remote can move also. They've made their best guess on setting these up as far as where they are to meet your hands, but then it's your personal preference to exactly where you want it. I usually slide mine in just a little bit. And what that does is it puts my finger at the outside of the brake lever. So that means if my finger is on the outside of the lever, I have more leverage, which means more power. If it's on the inside, less leverage, less power. So I want full power on my brakes. So I put it right here. I find the angle that fits and is a nice line in line with my arm and my shoulder. So look at how my arm goes down, meets up with my brake lever, and I want a nice straight line like that. So I don't want my levers too far up or too far down. So that'll make your hands get tired as you're braking and riding. Snug that up. And then I'll make sure my dropper post remote is where my thumb can reach it easily as well. And that's under the bar here. Then I can snug this up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. And basically I wanna match these so they feel the same on the left and the right. Okay, my bars and stem and brake levers feel exactly how they're supposed to, which is awesome. Now I'm gonna set my seat height. So to do that, it's nice to have something that you can lean up against. I'm gonna go ahead and extend this all the way. I wanna step over the bike, sit on the bike, and a good rule of thumb that I use to set my seat height is I put my heel on the pedal while I'm sitting on the seat and put my legs straight down. And it looks like I actually nailed it on this one. So if my heel is on the pedal, my legs should be straight without having to strain or lean my body to the side. So go ahead and do a couple cranks. If your heel is on the pedal and your leg is straight, then it's about right. That way, when your ball of your foot is on the pedal, you have a little bit of bend in your leg as it's at the bottom. And then I can make sure that my seat post works like it should as well. So I'll push the remote. I can go ahead and sit down. The seat stays down. Push the lever, it comes back up. Perfect. And down at the bottom, if you have a little bit of a kink here, you can go ahead and pull the rest of the cable up so that it's a nice clean bend at the bottom. The next thing I wanna do is set the sag on my suspension. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that the shock is in open mode. And you can look on the bottom of the shock and it has a little guide to show you which way is open. And that's for your compression damping. And then 
You want to bounce up and down a couple times. You'll hear it kind of air moving as you do it the first few times, and that's putting air into the negative chamber. And it's pretty technical if you want to really get into it, but what that does is it makes your shock nice and supple. So do it nice and slow a few times until you feel all of the air has moved into that negative chamber and it'll stop making that kind of air bleeding through noise. And then you'll put all your weight on the back, move the O-ring on the shock up against the shock body, and then carefully get off the bike. You wanna be at about 30% sag. So that means if this is how much travel you have on the shock, you wanna be about 30% into that or about a third of it. Looks like I'm a little light, so let me go ahead and put a little bit more air in there. It's nice of them to include a shock pump here so you have everything you need right off the bat. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. So I can go ahead and screw my shock pump in. When it gets in, you'll see the air go into there. And usually you want a little bit less than your body weight. So I'm 190. I'm gonna start out with 180 in here and we'll see how that works. Perfect. Now while this is attached, you wanna do the same thing to put the air into your negative chamber. So you wanna sit on it with the shock pump plugged in still. You can recheck your sag. So move, sit on the bike, move your O-ring up, then stand up. That looks perfect, right about 30%. So I'm gonna take note of that. It lost a little bit of pressure as it went into the negative spring. I have 170 in here right now. And it's important to note that number because we're gonna consult the Fox book to get our damper settings. To get our damper settings for this shock, we're gonna go to Fox's website and they'll have a tuning guide on there where you just type in what shock this is and then how much air you have in there and it'll tell me how many clicks of rebound I should put on here. The main idea though is when you push it down, you want it to come up pretty quick but you, you don't want it to be a pogo stick and you don't want it to come up like really slow. Um, you want it moving pretty quickly. Fox also has amazing videos on their YouTube page for how to tune this suspension and get it dialed in if you wanna look into it a little bit deeper. Uh, same thing goes with the fork. You'll set your sag based on Fox's settings and then you can adjust the dampers based on the settings that they provide on their website. And they do a really good job of making it easy to do. The last thing you wanna do before going out for a ride is set your tire pressure to make sure it's optimal. And with tubes in there, I would say a good starting point would be 30 PSI front and back. You can mess around with that the more you ride and really figure out what works for you. You don't want your tires too hard because you'll be bouncing off of stuff and won't get good traction. But if you have too little pressure, you'll pinch flat and that's not good either. So it's good finding that middle ground and it's just gonna take a little bit of riding to do, but a good starting point is 30 PSI. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? We got the bike built and ready to go in less than an hour. Now we get to go ride some trails. So welcome to the Diamondback family. This is the Release 29.2. This is a bike that I've been riding a lot for the last few years. I played a big role in helping test and develop this bike. This is one of my favorites. This is my go-to bike for rough and chunky stuff like Sedona. It's my favorite bike for Park City, smooth, fast, big, long rides as well uh, in Park City where I live. And the 29 inch wheels really roll fast, help you carry speed, give you more cornering traction and more climbing traction. This bike has really fun geometry with short chain stays, a roomy top tube, nice slack head tube angle, so it's stable at high speeds, but it's still a really playful, fun bike. So the spec on this bike is absolutely insane. Some of my favorite parts about the spec are the Fox suspension. This is the same stuff all the World Cup racers are using and world champions. And it's just made at a price point that can fit on this bike but it still has a lot of the same technology and it works awesome. We've got a really nice wheel set on here. It's a nice quick engagement on the hub. This bike's got a one by 12 Shimano drivetrain, so that means single chain ring up front, 12 speeds in the back, and it's got a clutch on the derailleur, so your bike's gonna be nice and quiet. You'll never lose your chain. It's really easy because you just have the shifter on one side. It's got the Shimano brakes as well, which has a great lever feel and nice, strong, powerful brakes with the 180 rotors. The bike is based around the Level Link suspension platform also, which is a really efficient pedaling platform. So it helps you climb up everything and get good traction and be really efficient with your pedaling, but is also plush on the downhills and still playful as well. I really like how dialed this bike comes right out of the box. You don't have to do anything to this bike 
to just jump out on the trail and go shred and have a good time. I know you're gonna have as much fun on this release 29 as I am, so let's get out on the trail, have some fun, and again, welcome to the Diamondback family.